How has the company considered so fragile being able to even secure this loan to keep it going for the moment? Look, they'll do whatever they can to keep going uh, because the Chinese government can't afford to uh, have it collapse right now. Um, and I think they're really trying to still work out exactly how bad things are because the company has been very good at concealing the extent of its debts. Uh, and I think they, they really haven't got to the bottom of it just yet. But this buys them some time. Buys them some time. Will it fend off the inevitable collapse? Look, I think there will be workarounds. I don't think um, the collapse of this company, if it does come to that, will be uh, will be an absolute catastrophe. It's a, it's a property developer after all. It's not a bank, so it's not going to bring the whole economy down. Um, but I do think the government will do whatever it can to, to keep it afloat in um, some form. So the bondholders and the equity holders are really going to take a take a massive hit. They might end up with nothing, um, but they'll go to great pains to, to salvage what they can for ordinary people people to um, reduce the possibility of social unrest. Yeah. You say it doesn't necessarily matter if it fails it's a property company and I guess the Chinese government has indicated, you know, market forces should prevail. But the volume of empty property in China, well, it's reported now to be able to house 90 million people. Now, that speaks to a much bigger house of cards, doesn't it? It's been a massive house of cards for uh, for some time. I mean, that's enough housing to house Australia more than three times over. Uh, it's, it's, it's truly a staggering amount of these sort of ghost cities and ghost apartments that you have around the place. Um, Xi Jinping flagged this very early on. About four years ago, he said that um, housing is for living in, not for speculation. And that kind of flagged a determination to, to, to take this problem on. Um, but it's, it's a really difficult one to unpack because part of the House of Cards is the dependence of local governments in China on the real estate um, market. So they're basically addicted to land sales. And if the price of um, real estate goes down, if they can't keep selling land, then local governments run out of money. And local governments are sitting on nearly $10 trillion worth of debt, which is an absolute Ponzi scheme um, waiting to fall over. And, and, and to that point, I mean, Xi Jinping is aware of it. If it does start crumbling and then had that flow-on effect, what, what action might you see from the, the government? Look, they'll, they'll do what they can to, to make the fall um, less brutal, if you like. Um, so you've seen the, pe the People's Bank of China already pumping um, you know, quite a lot of money into the economy to, to sort of stop people being spooked. Um, what it will, I think, lead to is um, a slowdown in um, economic growth. Uh, they, can, they can certainly expect that the double-digit days of growth are well and truly over. Uh, certainly Australian iron ore exporters are going to be uh, watching very, very nervously to see how it all um, pans out. But it's a quarter of China's GDP. So it's, it's an ugly festering boil, but they can't lance it all at once. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge, huge mess. It is. But it's fascinating, Graham, because of course, Xi Jinping is not being that concerned about industries that he brings to an absolute standstill literally overnight. He's done it in the tech sector, in the student um, uh, uh, tutoring sector. He's done it again with a very serious crackdown in Macau. Now, is the gambling industry another one that he is targeting? Yeah, there's a, there's a few targets within the gambling industry that I think he's, uh, he's going for. Um, one, uh, if you like, is this problem that China always has of, of dark money flowing out of China. And because of the crackdown on private industry more broadly, um, the flows have uh, basically increased by a factor of 10 um, while Xi Jinping has been in power. So there's an awful lot of money um, disappearing out of China and a good deal of it is disappearing um, to be laundered in um, Macau. Now, is it going to be a huge crackdown overall? If you look at the text of what they're going to do, um, it's about taking money away uh, from foreign investors and foreign companies and probably putting it into the pockets of well-connected locals in Macau. So I, I don't think it's a big crackdown on corruption per se. But that's a good point you make, taking it out of the pockets of Western businesses. How then do businesses who have invested in China make how do they go make sensible business decisions going forward in this environment yeah it's, I mean as you mentioned it's across a, a whole range of sectors um, that have woken up to find themselves in the party's um, the party's sites under this sort of vision of common prosperity the idea that, that the pie is not being fairly shared uh, and you know those who are getting too much should uh, should start coughing up um, 
where it hits next is, of course, the other question. I mean, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a growing list, but, you know, if you're a, a person investing in China, your question will be, gosh, you know, am I, am I next in their sights? It's, it's very hard to see where it might go next. And are we seeing evidence of businesses deciding to pull up stumps and get out? Oh, we've we've seen that for years. So this is not a not a new phenomenon. I mean, if you if you do a quick inventory of of Chinese migrants to Australia over the last four to five years, uh, the overwhelming majority of people who are involved in private business. Yeah, but what I mean is Western businesses who've invested. I mean, there have been so mm. many businesses that have taken very serious stakes in China itself. Mm. Oh, look, absolutely, and I think. Um, this, this pressure that you know we face as a whole to diversify away from China uh, is not just being felt by Australia. A lot of these big casino companies uh, are from America, and they're certainly um, you know going to be looking elsewhere. Ironically, Jamie Packer's decision to get the hell out of Macau in 2017 looks to have been quite a good one. <laughs> it certainly does. And Graham, you know, when you talk about Xi Jinping's aims for this common prosperity, as he puts it. Is the way he's attacking several sectors, doesn't that jeopardise that capacity to do that? Well, underlying all this is an ideology that, that many people haven't taken seriously. So behind all of this, before he came up with common prosperity, there's this thing called core socialist values. And it's notable that the sectors he's going after are areas um, that you would consider either borderline immoral um, or not fitting with sort of a, a neo-Confucian idea of how China should be. You know, so we, we talk about sissy, um, you know, stars on television. We, we talk about cracking down on kids spending too long on online games, although not all parents will disagree with that. <laughs> um, you know, the targets are very much um, morality driven. 